Hello, today I'm going to be talking about perpetual motion machines. An example of a perpetual motion machine is this wheel. It has mercury inside of it, so in every little compartment, the mercury is there. Everything has the same amount. But here, the mercury has to go that way, near the end. That causes a weight imbalance, which makes the wheel go down. And that makes the entire wheel spin. So now, this is going to be that. And then, that will make that spin. And then, continue the cycle. And then it's supposed to move forever. Here's another perpetual motion machine. A really strong magnet at the top of two ramps. This ramp goes up and there's a hole right there which opens up into this ramp which goes back down. This metal ball is going to be attracted by this magnet. So the blue arrows is what you're going to expect to happen. The ball goes up, falls down the hole, and back down again, and goes up, back down, forever. But both of, these, both of these machines don't work. This mercury, that shifts the center of mass. So the moving parts in the compartments will shift the center of mass down. So that makes the wheel just go a little bit this way and then spin back the other way and keep on spinning in that cycle until it stops. And here the metal ball will go up but the magnet is so strong that the metal ball will just go straight up and stick to the magnet. If for some reason it doesn't stick to the magnet and it falls down the hole, the, the ball will not go down this ramp because the magnet is pulling everything. So if it could go up this ramp, why would it fall this ramp? So then the ball will move up. So this machine does not work, neither does that. So these two laws of thermodynamics are the reason that none of these work. There are more laws, but these are the two we'll need. Suppose you had a solar panel, which was uh, powered by a light, but it's not any normal light. The solar panel giving out the electricity will power the light itself. So when the light hits the solar panel, the solar panel will generate electricity and send it back to light, and so on. So the first law of thermodynamics says that you can't put in more energy than you came out with. And neither can you take out more energy than you put in the machine. So in this case, the blue arrows is the energy in, and the red arrows are the energy out. So they have to be the equal, or else the machine will not work. Three of the blue arrows come out of the light as energy, and the solar panel picks them up. And then it sends three red arrows back. So that means you can't attach like a battery or a phone to charge it. You can't attach that because there will be no more energy left to power this because the in energy and the out energy are always the same. You can't have a little bit extra to power something else. So that cannot work. The second law is that energy likes to radiate out. This power source is radiating out the energy. Now back to our uh, solar panel light. You can see that the solar panel is covered with orange dots. The orange dots represent places where energy is escaping in friction, heat, and other ways. So all along the wire and the light itself and the solar panel, the energy is escaping. 
since there's no more energy left, you can't power that. So that won't work. And since the light gets very hot most of the time, that also radiates energy. Once the energy is gone, you can't put it back in. So that violates this law, and then you don't have a perpetual motion machine. So here's another example. A glass filled with water is connected to a pipe which goes up and falls back in. So you might think, how is the water going up there? So a famous scientist thought the capillary action will pull the water up and back in and so forth, it'll go continuously. Again, this is not gonna work. If the capillary action were so strong to pull the entire water up the pipe, the capillary action won't let the water come out at all. Because since the capillary action was stronger than gravity here because it went straight up, then why would capillary action let the water fall down again? So, there's no water. And if it keeps on going, it's not going to work. So those are all the reasons why perpetual motions don't work. Due to these two laws, they never will work. But, as for right now, we can know this. But, maybe sometime in the future, we might discover different types of matter or some weird chemical or substance that can defy this. Right now, we can't make a perpetual motion machine, but maybe in the future, we can make one. So thank you for watching. I really thought this was a very interesting topic because if we managed to make a perpetual motion machine. We could power all humanity. That was a, a dream from long ago. Because of the first law, we can't do that. But it would still be cool to have a machine that moves forever. Due to the second and first laws, we can't have that. But if we could, that would be a really great thing. So thank you for watching. Bye.